Okay, so I didn't say in the spoiler free review, but here, you know, either you don't care, you want to know, or you already know. So yeah, no, this movie did not actually happen. It was all made up, it was basically like the Blair Witch Project, you know. They wanted you to believe that something actually happened, and that by watching this you would get some hints. And that's about it. I don't personally think that it was all that interesting. You know, I'm, I'm not really into the whole alien theories thing. I have a hard time believing that there's not, you know, there certainly is life, but also intelligent life, probably somewhere out in the universe, but have you looked at the size of the universe? Do you even know how minuscule the chances of us meeting them are? I mean, I don't want to burst anyone's bubble. Okay, maybe I do. It's really, really small odds. So, I don't really think that any such thing has happened, and if we are going to make a movie dramatizing what may or may not have happened, how about we look at actual problems we have? How about we look at, you know, what religious people do to their children, what they teach their children, at least, you know, cults. I mean, that is an actual problem. That is, you know, a global problem. People don't think enough about what religious teachings do to their children. Thankfully, there are many on YouTube who do go into these things. And off the top of my head, go check out Angie the Antitheist and Loving Doubt. That's her name great people. I would have to say that that seems much more, I mean, are we really so bereft of actual problems that we have to make crap up just to, you know, okay, it's exciting, you know, and this one even says, you know, oh, God was an alien, you know, and, the, you know, speaking in ancient Sumerian. I actually sat there thinking, are you kidding me? You're not actually expecting to find the language. Just because you can hear the voice doesn't mean that it's any kind of earthly language. And then she found, oh, it's Sumerian. Okay, sure. And then the whole theory and, ooh, what I'm telling you now, you can find out in any museum. Yeah, because, you know, the oxygen mask couldn't possibly just be a helmet. That's what it looked like. The, the mask they showed looked like just a regular helmet. You know, and rocket ships, okay, you know. Yeah, sure, it was because aliens came down and, you know, now they're back to mess with our spines and induce suicides. The twist that it was just a suicide, her husband, that was really pretty weak. I mean, I was honestly thinking it was going to turn out to be that she had killed him, you know, and that the other people in Nome were just kind of, okay, well, she's had, a, had it rough, and maybe she won't hurt anyone else. But then when, you know, bad stuff, stuff starts happening to, you know, her kids and people she's recently been into contact with, it's like, okay, she's starting again, we have to stop her, and, you know, Kotea said... I saw, I know what I saw, but I can't accept it. That was so obviously, you know, ooh, alien contact, he saw alien contact. Wouldn't it have been way more interesting if he actually admitted that what he meant by that was that he saw her do something to someone else? I mean, one of my problems with this film is that at the end of the day, ooh, yes, her husband killed herself, but so what? it's clear that there was still alien contact. The movie doesn't leave any room for other interpretations. What's a, you know, what about the ancient Sumerian? What about the broken spines? The suicides? 
it's so clear that the movie wants to convince you that all of this alien abduction stuff that the movie purports have happened has happened, you know, and that just... I really want to be allowed to make up my own mind when it's a movie that's just gonna hint. I mean, if you're not gonna leave any room for interpretation, just come out and say it. I mean, American movies love to do that. Just watch the American remake of Open Your Eyes, a brilliant film by a Spanish film director, Alejandro Amenabar. Way, way better than Vanilla Sky. Anyway. It was just, there's no other way to, you know, interpret what happens. And it also just takes these characters forever to accept that it's, you know, outer space. I mean, even Mila's character, who very quickly jumps to the conclusion and says, Ooh, do you know how many people have said that they've seen, you know, what, 11 million, yeah, because, you know, that's apparently a huge number. I mean, didn't she say that that was since, like, the 30s? I'm pretty sure she said the, the 30s. Later she says the 60s, and that's about people who've disappeared. Since the 30s, 11 million claim to have been... Okay, that's 79 years... That's a really small number if you actually think about it. 11 million over 79 years? And, you know, I'm the kind of guy who always just lets the credits roll. I don't always watch it, but, you know, sometimes they play good music over it or have, you know, a surprise scene or some kind of thing. I usually leave it running, don't necessarily watch the TV. In this one, they played actual recordings of people who think they've had contact. Don't just love the first one who... I think the first thing he says is, Oh, I've got a doozy for it. Yeah, I'm sure they hear that all the time, dude. It's the UFO hotline. You really think your story is that much grander than... The one I really loved, though, I think it was one of the last, near the end of the credits, there was this don't remember the gender, but a parent who said, my kid is three years old, almost four, almost, almost four, and he says that the stars are following him and he sees the, the, the spacemen, you know. He's three, okay? I, 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 why do I get the feeling that this is the kind of parent who takes, you know, the sharpest, biggest knife from the kitchen to check for mon monsters under the kid's bed or in the closet, you know. If, if we check out the, the house, will there be, like, you know, bullet holes in the kid's closet from, you know, these ridiculous overreactions? Okay, he thinks that he's seeing... You know, ha have anybody else seen it? Is your three-year-old walking by himself since he seems to think that the stars are following him. Can anybody corroborate this kind of... Anyway, some people want to believe I say we have enough problems here on Earth. Let's see, was there anything else in the movie? I thought it was fairly obvious that she was gonna turn out to be wheelchair-bound at the end. I mean, once she started to get taken over, you know, and, you know, Mila screams because she's pretty good at that. She's good at the, you know, taking the horror roles and, you know, really throwing herself into it, giving it a lot of energy. So, it was, you know, obvious, you know, then you realize, oh, I've never actually seen the current one sitting in the chair. I've only seen, you know, the upper half of her, so she's probably with her bound. I didn't really think that the thing with the boy blaming her about the father went anywhere. It was, like, brought up twice, maybe thrice, and that was kind of it. I mean, that would maybe have 
had more impact to me if she had killed him, you know. I mean, I realize it's realistic that, you know, a child might blame the surviving parent for the not surviving parent's not survival, but it was just so plain in a movie about alien abductions, you know. And just to have it said, it was completely obvious that, of course, he killed himself for the same reason. I think Tommy, who name changed to protect the actual families, which don't exist, showing a huge amount of disrespect to the people who've actually vanished in Gnome and other areas, which, by the way, according to IMDb, is not any higher than other areas with that same amount of terrain that same amount of alcoholism and that same dangerous terrain, you know. Go figure, you know, people get drunk and there's dangerous terrain. Must have been aliens who took them. So anyway, Tommy and Nick, whatever, you know, Mila's deceased husband obviously committed suicide for the same reason. And that was, you know, supposed to be the thing that tied it all together, you know. It was just so obvious with these alien abductions. I mean, she didn't even go under when, when she, she says she retraced her steps and then she felt a presence and then she got drug out the room. Um, okay, red flag? Is, isn't that kind of a sign? You, you didn't even forget? I mean... Doesn't, doesn't that tell you something? Is, is this not more... You know, it's like the movie expects you to just believe in this stuff. So it doesn't even always completely treat it as outlandish, you know. I mean, in movies sometimes people afterwards complain that, Oh, it didn't go as far as I wanted it to. Yeah, because they kind of have to start, you know based on reality, and then they have to go and, you know, in, in like a mini-series you can maybe do that, or a straight-out television series, you can go much further, but typically you start in reality, unless, you know, it's a full-fledged fantasy, sometimes that just, you know, Lord of the Rings, just go at it, you know, go for it, and in this, it just didn't really hold back or remember to ground it in reality. They just threw a couple of facts out and, or in there, rather, and that was kind of it. You know, that was supposed to convince us that this was all real. And that whole thing of, you know, you don't remember it, but you, there was something strange. Ah, an owl. No, it's not an owl. You know, that that's how you are after you've been abducted. I don't know if there's much more to comment on. But yeah, it... I guess it's not the worst of these, and it has its audience, and peace be with that. I don't have a problem with that. I just wish that we had more interesting ones that also maybe took this approach. I don't think this has anything at all on the original Paranormal Activity. Maybe not even the second one. Anyway, those were my thoughts on The Fourth Kind. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.